Hello, everybody, and welcome back. <clears throat> so when we last left off, we had a crazy, not a crazy, just a strange edge case where this node should not be passable. But because there is no cube right here, my current logic says it is indeed passable. And we were getting a whole bunch of weird errors. So let's just continue debugging. Print um, found cube cores. Oh, geez. I'm coming from Lua, so um, I really like being able to do single quotes in that language. Python as well. Hey, it never did. What? And each of these are coming from faces. from faces cube face 81 what are you doing here validate linked path validate path nodes ooh interesting Cube face 184 is the starting of the call stack. Update. <laughs> so let's see, this should totally be called first <clears throat> by every single path node. Yeah, there we go. So end node, step in. Oh! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh boy. You know, it's the little things in life. It's the little things. Okay, found cube cores one. There we go. So he hit a dead end because there were multiple Okay, so path node, so we're should be down into our private functions. Check for overlap with other cube. Cube core. So I'm looking through all the cube cores. I'm an early out. Um, if this cube core is me, cube cores is equal to this get owning face get owning cube core continue and let's just do a print here um, over ugh, not Lua overlapped owning cube six sounds that sounds good Interesting. So I thought that this was valid.
How about now? <clears throat> These don't have anything down here, do they? Nope. So, this seems to be happy. Continue. Oh, which test node are we looking at? We're looking at the one that's currently overlapped. That looks like this is returning true. Now, there should only be one return true. Left start leaf node, straight diagonal, cube updated one. If it overlaps with another cube, Set next. Okay. So I'm returning the wrong... I should rename this. Um, and... Overlaps... Other cube. Let's do an equals false here. <clears throat> oh yeah! Yeah, buddy! Three-way solved. Dead. So let's try it this way. So this should fail as well. <sighs> Coolly cool, cool, cool. How long did that take? Eight minutes. <laughs> awesome. Spinning seems to be good, too. Uh-oh. Solid. Okay. So what next? Jeez, we uh, we got that. Make sure to save everything. Mm. Yeah, that's correct. Such a pain in the butt to have to click on these cubes. There's got to be a better way than clicking four times. <clears throat> um, I guess I could clean up this a little bit. I want to keep my dead end. I don't really care about this anymore. That works fine. Handling tap. We know that that's doing stuff. 
rotating. And that failed because it got double. Yeah. That's a pretty darn cool symbol. Okay, so what next? What is next on the menu? Is it time to start? Well, let's go to our to-dos. Make sure paths can reach the end. Make a button that will update all cubes in the scene. Disable cube rotations if Whitling is walking on cube. Hmm, that's a good one. I did combine touch input and mouse controller. Moving line to line to a core namespace. Rotate multiple times without ending swipe. Done. So I need to organize this. <clears throat> what do I need in order to test the game more efficiently? Or what do I want to... I mean, I could start doing some design work. I've been putting that off for quite some time. Also wanted to do some menu work, get the flow of the gameplay. Yeah, let's do that. Gameplay flow. I know. Um, core game loop. I want win loss conditions. I also want cube rotate sound effects. I'll just do sound effects in general. I also kind of need to design the core game loop, I think that's really important. Why can't I do Wacom settings? I want to draw, but I don't want to have to draw with double screens. I could just unplug the screen over here. Mm, it's not really a long-term solution. Oh, it's not plugged in. That could be part of the problem. Sound effects. <laughs> I don't want drivers.
I guess I'll have to do this next time. I could have sworn it comes automatically installed when you have the software added. <clears throat> oh well. I guess I'll just think about the core game loop with bad handwriting. Okay, you win this time, Intuos. So, um, we've got our splash screen. We've got our main menu. And our main menu, for now, we'll just have... We're going to want a... A level select, which will be... I don't know how high priority that should be. So it'll be nice to test specific levels. So this is good for development. Um, eventually we're going to want an options, but that's a lot later down the road. I want to make sure it's fun before I start adding in user options. Um, I'll definitely want stats of some sort. That's always fun. Maybe we'll even want a um, like a save slot so that multiple people can have different progressions. This, of course, will come later. So let's do um, green for definitely. Yellow for later, and red for much later. <clears throat> so I select a level. Um, definitely want credits as well. So I select a level, we will want a eventually I would like a fly through to show off the important parts of the level. Um, we also need a goal description. So save X Whitlings, um, collect X things, some combination, you have this amount of time, whatever. Um, simple basic UI, probably based on the goal description. And then we'll have a post level. Oh, achievements. Always fun. Oh man, this this broken pen makes my handwriting look awful. Um, let's see. So we've got our post level, and this will give the user stats and achievement notifications. And then post level would have replay next menu. I was also thinking of an interesting idea where um, So it might be kind of cool to have like a world view 
And the world looks just like, you know, the normal levels, except that each face or each cube, we'll say each cube is its own level. Yeah, that would be interesting. And if you beat the level, you have the ability to move a cube. Eh. But that's like... Do I want to force someone to beat a level three times? No, when you beat a level, you unlock the cube. There we go. <clears throat> And this is more designy stuff, um, and the world can come much later, I believe. I want to make a whole bunch of cool levels before I start building on top of that. So this is actually technically still a prototype, right? <clears throat> do I want to do all of this work? The answer is no. No, this is this is for the actual game. So what I should be doing is I should be doing all kinds of different crazy cubes. Cool. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I should just be focusing on interesting cube designs. And then once my prototype feels good, delete the code. Not delete the code. <laughs> um, I'm going to start a new project and then move the code over little by little at a time <clears throat> and fix issues and you know make things a little bit more efficient so let's play with some cube types so i definitely want a limited spin cube So that means that you spin the cube three times and then it locks itself down. So you have to use those spins very thoughtfully, strategically. <clears throat> um, we've also got a variable speed spin. So maybe one of the cubes is made out of obsidian and it takes 30 seconds for the spin to happen. So you go over and spin that first and then start working on the rest of the level and you have to sort of divide your attention between those two. Um, we have linked cubes. So if I spin cube A, cube B gets the exact same input. Um, and I actually think we also want a second category for face types. Uh, maybe let's not call it ice. Let's just call it slippery cubes. That would be a face type as well. So slippery means um, a turn equals death. And a turn is different from a spin in that a turn is a whittling changing direction. So the slippery cube, he would just sort of whoop, 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 splat into the wall.
Of course, we just have classic fire and brimstone, or just some kind of bad. <laughs> And by separating these into faces and cubes, that mean that would mean that we can say, "Oh man, this would be such a nice cube, but this would be such a nice face to use." But unfortunately, you can't use it, so you have to find a way around that cube type or that face type. And of course, the face types. If this face is fire, and you spin it, this face will now be fire. So, with cubes, I guess a good way to think of it is with cubes, the Buff or debuff would apply to all faces on the cube. So we've got... I feel like I had some other designs. I mean, this is a good place to start. Limited spin, variable speed, linked cubes. Um... Where's some other cube types that I had in mind? So we got connection. Mm, we could have reverse spin cubes. Which means if I told it to go this way, it would actually go this way. Nice little mind-bending thing there. Ooh, now that we've implemented the multiple um, spin feature, instead of a, a limited spin, we could also have a limited select. Or limited tapping. So it means I can tap it three times, but I could spin it as many times as I want to. Not, an, not a bad idea. Another category that I'm not going to touch for now is collectibles. Um, I definitely like the idea of encouraging the user to go through the whole level to get all the stuff, add an extra bit of difficulty in there. Hmm. This variable speed one's really interesting because you can think of a whole bunch of graphs. You know, this could be fast, this could be slow, and like one cube type would just always be slow, another cube type would be like fast, fast, slow, fast, fast, slow. Could also have cube types that start out fast, and each time that they are spun, they move more slowly. And sure, why not? Let's just do the opposite as well, just for symmetry. Start slow, and then each time you spin it, it'll move faster. we got curves. I don't know what you would call this. Crenellations. <laughs> this is definitely not the game term. That's the castle term. But these crenellations, we can use any number. We could do like, oh, three and one, or one and one. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of stuff that we could play with here. And don't forget always fast, which is kind of what we have now.
Hmm. Yeah. So let's get started on it. Um, I'm going to try making a new scene because how much time do I have? Halfway. <clears throat> One thing that should definitely be practiced is being able to make new scenes quickly. Um, I believe that level test, cube rotation test, I believe that all of these are broken now. Because they all use old cubes. In fact... Let's move this to here, old. This worries me a lot. <laughs> um, core level objects. Hey, buddy. There we go. Ooh, save. That's, that's not, no bueno. Um, let's change this just to cube. And let's do it. Let's make a new scene. So the thing with our cube scene test, no. Um, custom cubes, they are special cubes. Cube abilities. Cube effectors. Hmm. Trying to find a good name for the scene. Test special cubes. <laughs> oh, hey, no. Special cube test. And let's see how our core level objects works. I will have a cube begin. You can get rid of this camera and light. And our core level objects, the main camera, needs a start target. Yeah! Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Where is my... Uh, that's, that's interesting. Skybox. Definitely save. That was beautiful. Um, yeah, who's doing this skybox? Is that a per scene? Um, thing? Huh, it's per scene. I didn't know that. I guess it makes sense. You want to have different lighting configurations in different scenes. Oh, I didn't test. Good. Good, good, good. Ah, man, it's so nice when things work like that. Okay. What's next? Cube types, special cube types. So one of the downsides I guess not. <clears throat> I was gonna say one of the tricky parts of prototyping is deciding how you're going to visually 
convey these special cube types to the player. But, um, you know, I think I'm just going to use different materials, right? What is that? Path wall mat. And I've got a color here. These are unique. Oh, they're not. Fade shader. Oh, dear. Oh, I did. I did write that. That's pretty cool. So let's start with the simplest, and I believe that would be the limited spin. So we can only spin a cube X amount of times, and then something happens. So I'm going to create a new directory in here, oops, for special cubes. Limited spin. Hey. So how are we going to do this? Because we just have a generic cube rotator. That does the begin rotate. And that cube rotator lives on the cube core. Yes. So maybe what we can do is let's have a limiter Yeah, let's have a limiter class Oh, ooh <laughs> I'm missing some a little bit of formatting there I think it's serialized field, private integer, rotate count, um, rotate remaining, rotates available, rotations remaining. So Oh man, this might be so cool. We've got on begin rotate. And that's an event, and it's public. So in my limited spin start, I can get component cube rotator on begin rotate plus equals. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't know how much I like the naming convention. I mean, I understand the design of it, but...
See, here's the thing. This on begin rotate should check. I guess all it should do is. You know, maybe I don't want on begin rotate. Maybe I do. But I also think I want another one for on can rotate. Public delegate. Delegate returns. This is going to return a bool. This should actually be called check can rotate delegate. You know, that's something I'm not too sure about. Let's take a look here. Um, let's see, C sharp multi delegate with return values. And if, I believe this is not allowed. <clears throat> Whoa! Whoa, something happened. It looks like I'm still alive. My interwebs looks okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. Multi delegate with return value. Do, 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 do. Not what we want, I think. Hmm. What happens to the return value if I use multi delegate? Ugh, ugh, no, 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 no. Wow, these guys are pretty salty at whatever this person's doing. Turn multiple values, no. This is from 2004, 12 years old. In this situation, the return value is the value that is returned from the last delegate. If you want more control, you can call get invocation list, which will allow you to call each method individually and process the double values appropriately. Huzzah! <clears throat> okay. So, on check can rotate. Uncheck can rotate plus equals can rotate. Oh, uh, you know what? I think I can do a lambda here. So I'll just return if there are rotations available. I 
and then on begin rotate. Let's just subtract from rotations remaining. Nothing too crazy here. I don't believe we'll need any other bits. Cube rotator begin rotate. Check if the cube can actually rotate. So that was get invocation list. System delegate array. So if checks at check index, which is a delegate, I'll execute that function. Or maybe I need to invoke it. Dynamic invoke. Method. No, I didn't think so. Oh, I need to cast this as a check can rotate delegate. Yeah, buddy. So if that returns false, Um, print game object dot name cannot rotate. Return. Do all the stuff on begin rotate should subtract one. Hmm. I wonder, will it be that easy? Prefabs. Cube. Oh, hey, begin cube. So here is our cube, and I am going to add limit spin. Rotations remaining three. Oh! 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 Oh, yeah. I like it. Dang. Okay. Um, let's could just change all of these to like a gray or a black. When it's done. Uh, first things first, let's change this to less than zero or return greater than zero. Three, two, one. 
two, one. Yes. And if we're at zero, let's um, change the color of the walls. So let's see, this is my limited spin, and that is on a cube core. And my cube core has a face container. <clears throat> and then those face containers have a child, and they have meshes, and then they have this. This is the one I want. So, cube child zero. I'm going to make this a private member function. Um, private void, blacken walls. Transform um, face container. While face index is less than face container dot child count. And so each of these faces has exactly one child, the clone. <clears throat> So we get the face index, get child zero. And I am looking for a material, right? So now I've got this one. I want to go down into meshes and then path walls. Mesh renderer. What don't you like about this? Oh, just find. Sure. And let's test this out. So once I get down to uh, zero rotations remaining, I should get six renderers printed out. Twelve. Oh, eighteen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so six for each failed attempt. Gotcha. And you know what we can do if rotations remaining equals zero. Ah, oh, we still need this to return false always, don't we? Not great. So, find walls. Wall ranger. Only do this once in start.
And now I can do wall renderers at face index. And then here, wall index. Oops. Um, material dot set color I have no idea if this is actually named color shaders fade shader underscore color let's see Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean that that does look pretty good. Oh, hey, what is it? Oh, what is that? So good. Um, yeah. What is the size? What does it think this is? New mesh renderer. Transform child out of bounds, really? Found six. I guess the question becomes, when do I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of this, but it's a prototype. To do move this to a better place and start the order of operations was wrong. Not all faces had been spawned yet. Ooh, and you know what? I should do this. Um, we'll say if rotations remaining equals one because we know the order of operations. We check. And then we rotate. So if it's one left, then we blacken. And you know what? We shouldn't do it here. Because we have a 
on rotate complete. Oh my gosh, delegates are the coolest. And we're at exactly one hour. One, two, three. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Get invocation list. Right, right, right. Okay. Easy fix. Easy fix. And then we'll end it for today. And we get to wrap this whole thing in if on check can rotate does not equal null. Yay. Cool. One, two, three, dead. No more rotating. Cube cannot rotate. How about you? Oh, you can rotate just fine. Oh, cool. We need to. Okay. Uh oh. Ten failed cannot connect perpendicular paths. Well. What are you? Oh, I can't even tell what you are. Dang it. <laughs> Up face, right face. So back face, you are a half curve up. Okay. With negative 90. Okay, half curve up, negative 90 on the back face. Oh, it's stuck there. Nice. So, before I... Oh, jeez. One, two, three. And then, boom. Okay. So I do know how to find this failed perpendicular paths connecting. How about you? Oh, hey. Variable start node of cube manager. That shouldn't be too hard. Cube begin, up face, start node, cube manager. Okay, so we have something to work on tomorrow. That's good. Um, <clears throat> thanks, everybody, for coming. I will see you on the morrow.